Hey guys, I'm Chrome Drake. Welcome to Stellaris. Finally, after what feels like years of waiting, Paradox Interactive's grand strategy, Forex Hybrid, is here and it is beautiful. So please join me as we start a new game and dive into this galactic experience. Now, I'm going to be playing today a race that I've already created. I've probably played this game for a nuts amount of time, probably about 16 hours now, over the course of a day in a tiny little bit. So, yeah, I've played a bit too much. Uh, you can see how I made a couple of other races in the past. We've got the uh, Snickmert Vinsorium and the Aegis of Sekem. However, we are going to be playing the Empire, the Divinitorum, but the race is called the Rex Mori. Now, these guys are a very sedentary lot, as you can see. You know, they don't really get around all that much, but they are both scientists and spiritualists. They sort of married the idea of science and religion quite some time ago. Recently, there was an event. It was a vision, if you will, simply called The Way. This led the Rex Mori to discover the hy hyperspace travel. They actually witnessed the hyperlane network that knits the galaxy together. And they also saw something else. They saw a universe that, well, or at least a galaxy, that was ripped apart by war. They saw a potential future of death, misery, and suffering. And they thought to themselves, this is our purpose. We need to go out there and we need to get everybody under one banner. We need to get, sit everybody down and talk and make sure that this future does not come to pass. Hence, they now understand who they are. They now understand their role in the galaxy. They sound like fanatics. They would tell you that they're definitely not fanatics, but hey... Every fanatic would, I'm sure. However, you can see here that they're not really fanatics. We've not dipped, we've not done a double dip into any of these, um, into any of these ethos, e ethoses. I don't know if that's the right word. But they're xenophiles. They love the idea of meeting other people. You know, they're they're really keen on it. And they've not done it yet. They've only just sort of gone to the stars, but I'm sure they will soon. They are militarists. They are ready to take the fight to people. They're ready to bring the hurt and the smackdown if they need to, but only if they need to. And of course, the spirit spiritualists, they're very happy. They know their place in the universe. They're content. And they're rather charismatic as well. I don't know if that is simply just plus 1% happiness. Um, we'll find out. And they're intelligent, so you can see that all their sciences are buffed. Uh, we're starting with red lasers. We like arid worlds. And we will probably find out a bit more about these guys as we get into the game. So here we go. Okay, let's have a look here. Galaxy size, we're going to go for huge, because why not? We're going to go for a spiral to arm galaxy. 29 empires, and all the rest looks great to me. Here we go, starting the new game. And here we are. In the eon since the first primitive Rex Mori communities took shape in the dry canyons and mesas of Mechatol, our civilization has spread and prospered. Incidentally, Mechatol Rex, I could not resist. Uh, it's a wonderful 4x strategy board game from Fantasy Flight. Absolutely massive, so yeah, I, I, I had to. As we progressed through the technological ages, there were many religions among our people that contended with each other for followers. Gradually, sometimes peacefully, and sometimes less so, the true faith found its way to all corners of our world, and the faithful were united under a single universal church. Now, after the discovery of the Hyperlane Network, The Way, the finest minds of the, Divi of the Divinitorum have finished development of the first hyperdrives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. Wonderful stuff. So our government is a theocratic oligarchy, as you can see here. This government is a spiritualistic form of oligarchy, where a divinely guided council made up of the clergy controls the state. No division exists between the state and the dominant organized religion, which sounds like an absolutely terrible idea if we weren't the Rex Mori. Our ruler is Rex Clandrax. Uh, we are the Rex Mori, and yeah, there we go. So let's begin. So this is our starting system of Rex Primalis. We are, of course, on Mechatol, which seems to be... A moon, actually. It's an arid world around this gas giant. Yeah, so we're actually a moon. And if we press the E button, we will zoom out further. And here's our starting point in the galaxy. 1,000 stars ready to be explored. Now then, one thing I've noticed immediately about our starting point is that this here is a hyperlane that connects this arm of the spiral to the other. That's brilliant, because that will mean that we could travel and explore further. I'll talk a bit more about faster-than-light travel in a bit. 
But for now, let's jump back into our system and have a look around. So, currently, we know a fair bit about our starting system, or at least we think we do. We know we know the planets, we've named them, you know, we know all of this stuff. And we've had, I assume, probes or something that have gone out into the universe, and we, we've sort of mapped this star here, called Faltus. We, we've got that far before we discovered FTL. But that's about it. You can see here, this is our sensor range. Now... One thing we don't know, however, is what is on each of these other planets. We haven't really had time to explore them properly. And for that, while I get things underway and I explain everything else, we're going to take our science ship, we're going to click on anybody in the system, and we're going to uh, select Survey System. And our science ship, headed by Captain Dakalanex, wow, what a name, will go out and explore the planets and see if there's anything to see. However, on top of that, let's just talk about the interface and how everything works for a minute so that you won't get left behind. First of all, like most, grand uh, most of Paradox's Grand Strategy games, this will look probably rather familiar. We have our overview, so this is our government, right here. We can see our naval capacity of 12, etc, etc. Our budget screen, which, to be honest with you, they, these do such a good job of telling you what you do and don't have, I don't, haven't really ever used. Policies, which we're just going to take a quick look at. Basically, this is how our government works, and we can change these policies once every 10 years. For instance, first contact protocol. How do we act when we first encounter a new species? Well, we're not going to be aggressive, I'll tell you that much. We are going to be peaceful. So, uh, there we go. So, we're leadership primary species only. Uh, Voti rights elitism. It's an oligarchy. Resettlement prohibited. Migration. Free migration. Why not? So, in other words, our people are free to go to other worlds in the galaxy and spread the word. They are allowed to talk about the way with other people. Um, and all the rest of this looks good to me. Under here we can see edicts. These are empire-wide edicts that cost us one influence every single month. But they do things like, uh, well, we'll talk about ethics divergence later. But, you know, research speed plus 10%, uh, you know, free thinking, research grants. So it's stuff, modifiers that you can put on your... Uh, on your race, but we're not going to do that just at the moment on your empire, I should say. Over here, under the empire screen, uh, this is our empire, all our planets, um, all our leaders, I'll talk about those later, and factions, and we hope we don't get any, we will, but we hope we won't. Contacts, and it's looking a little bit uh, sparse at the moment, we can see empires and we can see all the different species we've encountered. Because there can be more species than there are empires, which is very interesting. We get the ability to design our own ships, and again, we will talk about that when we research more tech at a later date, uh, situation log, we have no situations. And the t oh, the, what we do have are our victory conditions. So we have only two so far. The game has only just launched. And so far, we have the domination victory, which, as you can see, win the game by only 40% of all colonizable planets. And the conquest victory, win the game by conquering or subjugating all of their empires. I don't know if federations count. I hope they do. Anyway, and along the top here, we have our research screen. I'll talk about this in a sec. We've got energy credits, which are a mixture of money and credit uh, and power. So think of this as a mixture of power and money. Same thing. Um, this is where most of our maintenance for our stations, our ships, and everything else will come from. We don't really spend it on much, but one or two things. Minerals, however, are what we build our fleets with, what we build the buildings within our planet. Influence, we can spend, um, well... It's sort of in two ways. Uh, you sort of spend the monthly gain to support things like federations and frontier outposts, and as you saw before, you can spend you can spend it directly on edicts. Uh, these are our science points. Currently, we're gaining five physics, society, and engineering science a month. These are our strategic resources. We haven't found any yet. Um, we have one of five directly controllable planets, we'll talk about that later, and we've got 3 of 12 naval capacity. One thing, very important thing I need to do immediately off the bat is set our research. Now here we can see our researcher, so he's very good at industry. He's got a plus 5% research speed, which is excellent, and this guy uh, gains experience more quickly. That's fine. That's fine. I will, I will live with that. Now then, research, we have three different fields, physics, society, and engineering. Now this is where it gets very interesting. Now forgive me if you've already watched some Stellaris videos at this point, you'll know this by now. But for those that don't, the tech is organised into decks of cards, in sort of in quotes, right? So every time I can research, it will, it will present me three research options. But every time I select one of these options, the other two will be shuffled back into the deck, and they will hopefully reappear at a later date. Now the deck is stacked so that certain technologies, such as... Good, go uh, yes, certain technologies such as New Worlds Protocol will always appear early on. Uh, some of the technologies, however, are rare, and you might want to take them while you get them. There's no guarantee you'll get them again for the rest of the game. But, so anyway, with all that said, um, 
I actually really like getting early deflectors or getting some defense up. So these are basically shields, shield modules. We'll talk more about that. This is a an upgrade to our basic science labs to give us more science every month. And this is a solar panel network that we could put on our space station, which is currently in orbit around Mechatol. And uh, that will sort of earn energy credits. But for now, we want deflectors. Now, these are nice, but we definitely want to get colony ships started. And finally, in engineering, oh, oh, I like this. Now, this is one of the texts that can reveal a strategic resource, in this case, Batharian Stone, which allows us to build the Batharian Power Plant, which is really, really good. Uh, these two are nice, but definitely, definitely doing that. Okay, so let's unpause. And while we've unpaused, I am going to uh, just run it on normal speed for a, for a sec. And let's have a look at Mechatol. So this is our world. So we can see here, this is our home world. So we've got 100% hab habitability. All the worlds, all the home worlds will start off looking very similar to this. We can see here, we've got our planet, planet governor called Ludramex. I love, love the name. That's brilliant. And this is the bonus that he gives to all of our people. You could set governors for each individual planet, though it does become a bit costly. And we have a leadership limit, which is currently 10. And scientists and admirals and everybody go towards that limit. Now we can also see here that the planet size is 16 and we are currently producing 12 food and consume 7 right now this is because we have 7 population so of that 12 food 7 pops are eating 7 of it and we can this planet is 16 tiles in size so if we have a look at the surface that means we can support in total 16 people uh, so we need as much food as we have tiles on the surface, ultimately, once the once the planet has been uh, created. The more food you have, I believe, uh, let's just have a look for this pop-up, surplus food will increase the growth rate of pop. So you might want surplus food on there, but whatever. Now, if we look at our planet, we see that we've got these people here are our pops. These are the Rex Mori on this planet here. The Rex Moria. Rex, Rex Morians, I should say. Uh, no, plural, I did actually put as Rex Moria. Fair enough. So together, as a collective, they are they are Rex Moria. <laughs> so here they are on this planet. Now, this guy here is currently in the process of being born. He's a new pop that will appear on this tile, ready to work it when he is born. And these things are what are what are called tile blockers. Now, we've obviously come out of, uh, come out of some sort of crisis before we got into the Space Age, because we've got um, industrial wastelands, and we've got sprawling slums. Uh, but, however, we can get rid of these. We can actually spend en energy credits and... Uh, minerals and a bit of time that's 120 days incidentally to get rid of these blockers when we need to we don't really need to just at the moment and uh, yeah these guys are working their tiles quite happily um uh, what i'm going to do is i'm immediately going to build a mining network this produces two minerals and as you can see here this tile produces one mineral and one food we will look at this I'm going to pause and we'll look at this anomaly in just a moment. Now, it's very important to note that because this mining network only produces two minerals, when I click to build it on that tile, we will no longer produce the one food on that tile. However, if I get rid of the building later, that one food will still be there. It's just kind of suppressed for the time being once that is built. So, that's worth knowing. So, we've found an anomaly. Um, as your scientists explore the galaxy, we will come across anomalies like this. Now, however, there's a 30% failure risk, and this will go down as our scientist levels up. So, I'm just going to leave it be. I'm going to ignore that for now, and we're going to get on to more pressing matters. These here, uh, First Void Skulkers, I don't really like that name. Let's rename them... Let's see, hang on, let me just uh, pause and rename these guys. Uh, first Wayfinders. There we go, that seems a bit more fitting for our empire. Oh, wow! Okay, this is great. Our science ship has already found a uh, fair few minerals and some energy credits on the uh, moons and planets, uh, energy credits around the sun. And, ooh, look at this. Great stuff. I'll talk about that in a minute. But first of all, we're going to get our first wayfinders. And what we're going to do... Uh, that's inside our center range. What we're going to do is just send them out to have a look around the galaxy. So, we're going to have the move here, and then I'm going to hold down the shift button and queue up a bunch of movement commands. And you might be wondering why I'm doing this. Well, the thing is, although we need our science ships to survey planets, and let's come, let's drag them around here. Although we need our science ships to survey planets, as long as uh, a system, as you can see here, this has just popped up, has been in our sensor range, then we can see whether or not there are any worlds in that system and what kind of worlds they are. This is an arid world, Diam one which is great because we have an arid world preference. In fact, until we, until we get the technology to colonize other types of worlds, this is the only world we can colonize when we get our capital ship, when we get our colony ships, excuse me. 
Uh, another arid world or Chidraconis. That's brilliant. Well, wonderful. Great stuff. Um, however, for all you new players out there, I want to draw your attention to something immediately, and I will speed this up any moment now. This little tick box down here is absolutely bloody vital. I'm going to turn it off, and this is what the galaxy looks like with it off. I cannot see on Rex Primalis that we've got energy credits and minerals unless I hover over it. I cannot see that there's a, a, a colonizable world in Diem or anywhere else. It's, it's appalling. Always turn this on. You can't just hold down Alt. We'll toggle it until you let go. You have to click this button. Do it. It will make your life a hell of a lot easier. Right, I'm going to speed this up now and we're going to get underway more quickly. I'm going to go back into Prex... Oh! No, I'm not. I'll do that in a minute. Encounter in Breglar, in, in, in the Breglar Star. We've encountered some form of alien vessels in the Breglar system. These strange objects have been flagged as alpha aliens until we can learn more about them. We should proceed with caution. Interesting. Now, what that's done is it's created... I'll read this in a minute. It's created something in the situation log called Investigate Alpha Aliens. Now, we can research this, and it will just happen, and it will take 180, uh, it will take 180 days. However, this will stall out our society research while this is going on, so we will actually, for these 180 days, not be researching our colony ship. However, our colony ship will still take 61 months to research, so 6 months out of 61, it's not exactly a massive amount, is it? But, there is a reason I'm not going to click that yet, and we'll go into that in just a little bit. However, enigmatic spacefarers, the Divinitorum has finally encountered fellow wanderers among the stars. Despite their intentions being unknown and potentially even hostile, the atmosphere on Mechatol following the report from our contact fleet can best be described as rapturous. We're xenophiles, we, you know, our vision is coming true, we are finally, you know, we are finally realising our place in the universe, we love this, this is, this is great news. Right, so I'm going to go back to our construction ship. The construction ship is a very special kind of ship, and we're going to get him working. And what I want him to do is to build uh, mining stations on this asteroid and on Darakun. Now, these mining stations both cost me... Was that 60 credits or was that 90? I think that was 90 in the end. They both cost me 90... Was that actually 90? I didn't actually see. Let me just... Uh... Oh, it is 90. Okay. Wow. Whatever, regardless, they cost me 90 uh, of my minerals to build. However, so this one will make itself back in 30 months, this one will make itself back in 45 months. It is completely 100% in the early game, guys. Work on your minerals. Get your minerals in good health. You can worry about energy a little bit later, as and when you need to. Minerals are key. We found another encounter in Rastaban, and we've called them the Beta Aliens, so now I'm going to talk about the other thing. So if we go back to our situation log... We now have the beta aliens available for research. Now then, if I do something here and I click both, if I click to research both at the same time, if I actually start the game, you'll notice that they're both ticking down at the same time. I don't know if this is a bug or not. I don't know if this is intended behavior. Whatever the case, it's happening and I don't regret using it. <laughs> so let's see, we've got a desert world, uh, an arctic world, another arid world in uh, Cam, well, in Cam. In the cam solar system. Alien vessels? Uh, let's see. Look like... So, ah, I know what those are. I won't spoil it. I know what they are. Uh, that's rather interesting. Another arid world. God, Maya, we've got so many arid worlds around us, guys. This is wonderful. Right, now then. Our science ship has fully surveyed Rex Primalis. And we know this because A, there's been a pop-up, and B, oh, he's also gained a level. Well done, uh, Larod Falder. Yep. Now, we know this because the Rex Primalis name, you see all these other names, how are they great? This has turned white. This means the system has been fully surveyed, and we found a lot of minerals. We found four energy credits, which is not bad, and we found three engineering research uh, on Fut uh, Futusom, which is absolutely amazing because we can now build a research um, station there, and it will cost us one energy credit a month to maintain, but we'll get three more engineering research a month. However, this science ship is now doing nothing whatsoever, so I'm going to get him to go out and survey more worlds. And, when we've got enough credits to do so, I will be building a second science ship. It's going to take 100 credits, so we're going to have to wait a few months to do that. But in my opinion, it's totally and completely worthwhile to do that. Uh, the, more the more science ships you have in the early game, the more, you know, the more stuff you can look at and the more you know where to leverage yourself in the universe. 
in the galaxy, I should say. All right, Mechatol's finished building the mining outpost. That's great. I'll probably go after these energy credits for the construction ship soon. We've just found Gamma Aliens. I will queue those up to begin as well. Oh, finding it. We've found a really nice array of worlds. Oh, we've already found minerals in Faltus as well. Here's one of the curious things, though, about this game, is that one thing I've noticed from playing several games already, or starting several games, is that the AI tends to spawn into the galaxy several months after you've actually begun. Uh, so, in other words, you can actually look around and go, Oh my god, this is amazing, 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 planets, 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 and suddenly, AI appears, and you can't get to any of them. So it's a bit annoying, so you can't take this stuff for granted, but you hope it'll, you hope it'll work. Ah, amazing. So, first bit, first racial research is done. We found crystalline entities. The reports of strange, flea-floating, crystal-like objects observed in certain systems have been investigated. The ship-sized objects, and their slightly smaller but equally crystal-like satellites that first appeared inert, but sudden shifts in their orientation relative to our ships and new energy signatures emerging from within the prisms indicate that they should be regarded as hazardous and approached with caution. Even should we not find a martial use for them, studying a shattered crystal should no doubt yield interesting results. And we're going to issue a special project, project for a remote study of the crystals. Log updated. Interesting Last enough. And of course, here comes the second special project. Excuse me a sec. Ancient mining drones. Reports of deep space drones in certain systems have been, invest have been investigated. The drones appear to be the workers and custodians of an autonomous orbital mining operation established a millennia ago and then soon abandoned, uh, soon abandoned by all but the drones themselves, judging by the state of the processing equipment. The drones possess powerful mining lasers and make obviously threatening, if not outright hostile, overtures towards Remoran vessels when approached. They may, on they may only be old drones, but they should be kept under close watch by the Divinatorum. And now we're a peaceful bunch, we kind of just want knowledge, we want to learn about the, the galaxy at large, so we're going to establish a listening post on Mechatol. And also guys, apologies for me being a bit, uh, you know, a little bit... I don't know what the word is, phlegmy at the moment is probably the right word. I, I woke up today with a hell of a sore throat, which really works wonders when you want to record a video. I'm sure you can understand that. So I'm here with my lamp sip, <laughs> recording a video at the moment. And then one thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to... I don't really need to pause there. I'm going to get myself a signed ship, get that queued up. Tomb World. Oh, that's not really too much good for us. Okay, the mining stations have been constructed. I'm going to have to go after some of these energy credits in just a moment. How's Mechatol looking? Pretty good. Pretty good, honestly. Um, no, no, I'm going to want you here. Uh, no, we'll, 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 we'll let you go there. I'm going to build a farm here. Um, you can move people around, and it's actually quite a good system. I really do enjoy it. Construction um, complete. Okay, uh, Mechatol's finished its construction crew uh, queue, so we got a new science ship. Just before we do that, I'm just going to take our Wayfinders, and let's see. Let's send them around here. And then let's send them down this galactic arm and see if there's anything to see. Perhaps I shouldn't be exploring so far with my military ships right at the start of the game, but let's find... But Whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll be alright. So, our new science ship has been built. Now, there's one glaring problem here. We don't actually have a leader on the ship. Um, Rex Lor Well, the science ship, there's the Rex Lorid Cundex, but we don't have a scientist. And the science ship without a scientist is not a fantastic ship. So, we go to our Empire Manager here, we'll go to Leaders, and we're going to recruit a scientist leader. We are going to take this guy right off the bat because he's uh, got survey speed of plus 25%. This other guy is in industry expertise, not so great. And this maniacal research speed of plus 5%, wonderful, but doesn't do so well on a ship designed to survey. So we're going to take this bloke, we'll recruit him. He's age 49, so he might not live for more than 50 years, but whatever. And we shall assign him to his ship. Raxaked, well, congratulations on your commission. And we need to send you out to basically survey the galaxy. So let's let's bring you out this way, I think. Yep, we'll send you out that way. Uh, that gives you stuff to do. Our other science ship, we will send you out over here. Uh, by the way, the other th the other reason that I actually sent my first wayfinders out early 
is that they could see whether or not there are any hostile alien vessels in other systems. And of course, my science ships, being unarmed, I mean, let's face it, if they come across a hostile alien, they're not going to have a good time. So let's avoid that as much as we can, I think. Uh, let's get back underway. I'm going to... Oh no, I need 90 minerals to construct uh, on the energy post. Ah, special project comp uh, complete space amoebas. The entities encountered by our fleet some time ago are new, wondrous forms of spaceborne life. Quickly nicknamed Space Amoeba following an analyst's gross mis uh, misreading of initial sensor output, the creature is in fact larger than the average Remoran Corvette. We should leave it be and remotely monitor the creature and its kin from Megatol. I agree. Let's issue a special project to remote Space Amoeba Situation study. Mode. Excellent. Good. Our, um, our military is underway. System survey complete. Not really found much in that system at all. Just uh, a couple of minerals. But hey, you can't win them all. See what's about. Um, ah, hostile fleet present. Ah, crystal, crystal entities. So we don't really want our science ships going into that into that region of space. But no matter whatsoever. Uh, right, I'm not mind. Just going to send my construction ship to grab a few minerals. Let's build a let's build a mining station on the sun. Why not? Now in the game there are three versions of FTL. That's faster than light travel. I am using the hyperlane travel, which means that I, th basically at the start of the game we have all these hyperlanes are generated between all the stars. My ships can only hop from one star to another down these hyperlanes. However, they can jump really, really quickly, so they can't make fast, long distance journeys, but they can jump from star to star extremely quickly indeed. Or found another anomaly that we're going to leave be for now. So. That's great. Now, the other two types of FTL are warp technology, which is slow, but you can make long jumps from star to star, for instance. So it's quite it's quite a free FTL. And finally, the oh, we've got a system survey. Nothing. Oh, no, no, we've got some energy and minerals. That's nice. And the anomaly. Have a quick look at the... Uh, that is a pretty awful world, <laughs> all things considered. The last form of FTL is wormhole. And basically, you'll start off with one wormhole generator... On it on your planet, and that will create a sort of a a radius around, and your ships jump from a planet from the wormhole to a planet, and then back to the wormhole, and then to another planet, so on and so forth. So you basically have to construct wormholes out. So basically, you construct a wormhole here, then you construct a wormhole here, and out and out and out, and so on. It's an interesting. It's a very interesting FTL. I've been playing with this one of my games, and I really like it very very much. Uh, okay, fleet orders finished. Ah, we found Delta Aliens. That's interesting. We're not going to research those just yet. Let's go back onto Mechatol. Uh, this guy's still being born. We're going to put him over here. We're going to build a hydroponics farm and get a bit more food on there. Hydroponics farm is one of the few buildings that... Uh... Oh, they do cost you maintenance. Well, my mistake. Thank God we actually got the energy credits before. Habitable World Survey. We know now, uh, we now know without a doubt that a thriving biosphere is not something unique to Mechatol. Both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life found throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalogue the life forms we encounter are, are already underway, but our xenobiologists have urged us to focus our planetary survey efforts on habitable, life-bearing worlds. A commendable initiative. And this is basically like a little quest chain, um, which is... But we just survey eight habitable worlds, so we'll do that eventually anyway, and then we might get a bonus at the end of it. So, where are we? Um, we'll probably get another mineral outpost in just a moment, when we have enough uh, minerals. Like I say, I'm using a lot of minerals to, in, the, in the pursuit of that at the beginning, but it's so worth doing. It is so very, very worth it. We'll just go up to fastest for a moment. And this science ship now has nothing to do. Not bad, not bad. Uh, let's see. Now, we have a bit of a problem here because I can't... Re I, can I can get my science... Okay, right. I'm going to put my fleet on passive and we're going to try and survey these systems here. Now, by putting the fleet on passive, normally fleet stances, as you can see here... Normally, your science ships are set to evasive. This means if they jump into a system with a hostile or a potentially hostile enemy, they will do their damnedest to get away. And because we're on, uh, whoops, I have 
do something like that. Because we're on an evasive fleet stance, he's trying to go all the way around here just to avoid these aliens. If I put him on evasive, he will jump into the system, go ah! and jump out. <laughs> and that's what we're going to hope happens here. Okay, he'll be jumping in any moment. There he is. And these guys aren't moving. By the time they even got to where we are, we'd be jumping straight back out again. There he goes. And we'll put him back onto evasive stance now. Right, have we found anything over here? We found another arid world. Now, I'm probably that might be one of the first worlds I take because I really want to secure this um, this highway, if you will, between the two spiral arms. That's going to be a big deal for me because I want to explore. Oh dear, Delta. Oh, oh my. <laughs> we have first contact. Uh, the first Wayfinders was forced to return to Redamon from Sithonis Maelstrom because it is within the borders of Cinderethan Guardians. And this is something. So, <laughs> pitiful creatures, know that we roam the stars for eons before your hapless species mastered spaceflight. If any of your wretched little ships cross into our space, do not expect them to return. We have a problem already. These guys are a fallen empire. I know this from watching other streams and basically from the size of the galaxy and the way they've taught us. Fallen empires are empires that ruled the galaxy millennia before you even hit the stars. These guys will not expand as a race. However, now I'm guessing these guys are isolation isolationists, so if we actually play our cards wrongly and we settle too close to them, they could attack us. And if they attack us, we might as well be dead. <laughs> so, with the neighbor like this, we need to be incredibly careful. Um, let's see. So, we have different responses here because of our ethos, or, or our ethics, if you will. Um, love is friendship set to music, uh, Sondra Rathani. So, Sondrathani. Sondrathani, there we go. Yeah, there. that's how we're going to respond. <laughs> The news that we have encountered intelligent alien life for the first time is spreading like wildfire throughout the Divinatorum. Our citizens are fascinated by these beings, and the media is full of reports and speculation on, the, on their culture and society. The revelation that we are not alone in this galaxy has largely been greeted with celebration on Mechatol. The empire these aliens have founded appears to be very old. Oh, this is amazing, it actually changes because they're a fallen empire. The empire these aliens have founded appears to be very old, and their level of technology is far ahead of our own. There is no doubt a great deal, there is, there is no doubt a, a great deal that they could teach us. Their wisdom must be great. However, good luck trying to get them to teach us that wisdom. Now, unfortunately, because our wayfinders are in their space, they've now kind of, um, <laughs> yeah, they've now basically been lost, but they'll make their way home soon enough. Uh, scientists have leveled up. That's great. Construction complete. We've constructed something on our planet. Uh, we're going to just get our construction ship to just exploit are these energy credits over here? And then we'll probably take this mining post here as soon as the month ticks by, which is now, so I'll just queue that up. So yeah, ooh, ooh, that's nice, I like that. But yeah, um, so we have an arid world within our range to colonise, and that'll put all the other worlds, yep, yeah, within our range as well. We've explored a bit, we've had a good start, our science ships are doing their thing. Uh, finding uh, anomalies that sadly I can't really risk picking up at the moment. And we found our first neighbour that is a whopping gigantic... Look at that, right at, right in between, uh, you know, two of the arms, three of the arms really, which is an old ancient empire, a fallen empire, that may give us some trouble as this game goes on. But I think that wraps this episode up. Thank you very much indeed, guys, for joining me. Great health, good gaming, and goodbye for now. See you soon.